I'm out on the trek today and I'm going to Puskal. I haven't been to Puskal for about two months now and the reason for that is the weather because of all the bad weather I find wet riding against the wind the hardest so when it's wet and windy I do seem to stay away from the seaside although it is quite windy today windier than I thought so I hope it's not going to be too difficult to ride last time I went to Perth Call was Christmas Eve when a friend from work came over he'd been threatening to go for a ride together for months and it turned out to be quite a reasonable day but when you're trying to impress your friends about where you live then you want to take them to the nicest on the nicest route but being as uh, I've only been riding just over a year I do still have a number of fears and anxieties and I do fear going out into the wind and not being able to cope and running out of energy this is a really steep hill I'd love to fly down here but I don't have the nerve for it certainly wouldn't want to come back up this way at least today we've got a westerly wind so if I can get to the changeover point which is basically where I cross the motorway then I should have a wind blowing me home for the last six miles in the last video I talked a bit more about the giant so I thought well Perhaps in this video I should tell you a bit more about the trek. So this is a trek checkpoint ALR5 and I really ended up with it. I say ended up with it. I, I like the bike but it wasn't my first choice my first choice was a Damani but that said now that I've got the checkpoint I think I like it a lot more than I would have if I'd got the Damani turned out to be a really good by in the end and there's a strong emotional attachment to this bike so my dad died before I started cycling and in fairness he'd had a good innings when he died my brother said he'd left us a, a little bit of money he said it's not much a couple of hundred quid you know might be able to get yourself a new telly or something because after my mother died my dad remarried so obviously the bulk of what he had went to his new wife so the whole process of sorting out wills and this that and the other 
really took a long time, well over a year. And during that time I started cycling and I, I wanted a better bike. Plus the fact the cube was too small for me. And I was looking around and I did like the look of the Damani. But I didn't think that I was gonna buy a new bike. Anyway, during this whole process, and I'd been to the bike shop several times to look. And when the inheritance came through, it was a lot more than my brother and I had expected. So I said, sod it, I'm going to get a new bike. So I went down the shop to try and get hold of a Damani and they didn't have any and it was going to be months before I could get one and one thing and another. But all the time I was there I kept looking at this checkpoint and I just loved the colour of it. The Demani is only available in grey, well it was at that time. So in the end because I loved the colour and because I wanted a bike now I bought it. And I have to say it was definitely the right choice because it's opened up so many new routes for me because I do go pretty much wherever I want on it there's a gravel path I've even been on a bit of single track with it and it's performed excellently. So I'm really pleased with it. Puthpool's always busy. You know this theory of seaside towns becoming ghost towns in the winter. That's not the case here. Anyway, back to the bike. So, looking back, I think not only has the bike opened up new routes, but it's also, I think, more suitable geometry for an old bloke, especially who hasn't sat on a bike for 30 odd years. My cube was just a cheap worn out bike and I got a Facebook marketplace. So as I said, this bike has a strong emotional attachment for me. Right. And uh, that's because not only is it my first proper bike, but it's also my dad's bike. He doesn't know he got it for me, but nevertheless. So this frame size is a 58. Which a lot of people have told me is too big for me. And I really, I really worried about that for a while. And I was annoyed because I'd put all my measurements into the Trek website. And 58 is what it recommended. But I sit quite comfortably on the bike. So, does it really matter? 
what other people think or recommend. But that's not to say I haven't had any problems, because I have. I had a creaky noise. Well, before that, first day out. Snapped the cable on the front derailleur. So the bike shop fixed it. No issues there. Then after that, I had some brake judder on the front and this annoying creaking sound, which I've spoken about in previous videos. And We've tried all sorts and then I put on new pedals and it went away and the brake judder improved a bit. But then one of the top tube mounting bolt lugs broke loose and I haven't even used it. But you could see it wobbling in the frame. So I took it back to the shop where I bought it. I mean, I wasn't using it. But I thought, well, if I do want to use it sometime in the future, and by then it's out of warranty, or if it falls out altogether and leaves a gaping hole in the frame. And of course, as I've discussed before, I think bikes are too expensive. So I paid a lot of money for it in my mind. So why shouldn't it be right? Morning. A lot of cyclists out today. More so than on a summer's day. I think it's the sort of first dry and relatively mild day of the year. So there's a big push, pent up frustration of people who haven't ridden through the winter. Of course, I'm feeling smug because I've ridden all through the winter. But for all its faults, I just love riding this bike. I love looking at it. Do I want another bike? Of course I do. But my plan is just to add another one to the collection rather than the replace one. Anyway, I took the bike in to be repaired and that meant stripping it down. sent the frame in and they repaired it. So no problems there. But since I've had it back, the creaking noise has come back and the brake judder has come back. So I suppose this bike is like a naughty child. You love them. But you get a bit frustrated when they don't do what you want. Oh, this hill just goes on and on and on. After those traffic lights, I turn right. And I get to have a drink. Something to eat. Because I'm not that good at eating on the bike. Unbelievable traffic today, and it's a Sunday as well. I did think I would have to work on eating and drinking on the bike, but then I thought, why? It's not a race, it's 
just have a couple of minutes rest. So much easier than yesterday. Couldn't see a bloody thing down here yesterday because of the rain and the mist. So I wish the track didn't have any little niggles. Of course I do. But I still love the bike. 